Last time we looked at uh, convergent matrices and also discussed about polynomials and matrices. And in particular, uh, we defined the notion of a monic polynomial. And then we started looking at other matrix factorizations, in particular Gaussian elimination. And uh, then uh, at the end of the class, we started discussing triangular factorization, in particular the LU decomposition. So today I will talk about this LU decomposition. <clears throat> Our goal is to find a matrix L, which is lower triangular, and U, which is upper triangular, such that an N cross N matrix A can be written as the product of these two matrices, L times U. And uh, here A is an N cross N matrix, and so are L and U. Both are N cross N matrices. So uh, the, the uh, basic unit of such a decomposition is uh, these Gauss transforms. And uh, essentially what this is going to do is to uh, perform Gaussian elimination. And this Gaussian elimination is equivalent to a sequence of Gauss transforms. That is to say that there exist matrices M1, M2 up to Mn minus one, such that if you take the product of all these matrices times A, you will get an upper triangular matrix, and which is the same as the upper triangular matrix you would get if you had performed Gaussian elimination on that matrix. So uh, MK here, the kth uh, matrix in this uh, series of matrices, is the one that introduces zeros below the main diagonal on the kth column of A after the previous K minus one transforms. And because of this, when you do the first transform, you are introducing zeros below the diagonal element of the first column. When you do M2, when you multiply that with M2, you will, you will keep the first column intact, but you will introduce zeros below the main diagonal of the second column and then the third column and so on. So after N minus one transforms, you've introduced zeros below all the first N minus one transforms. And so the result is Gau upper triangular and this Gaussian elimination process is complete. So what I need to tell you now is how to determine what this M1, M2, etc. is. And then uh, if I want to write A as LU, I need to do two more things. One is um, I'll have to take all these matrices M1, M2 up to M1 to the right hand side. Then I will get uh, um, the inverse of the product of all those matrices times U. And I need to show you that the inverse of the product of those matrices is lower triangular so that you've effectively been able to write A as L times U. So those are the steps that remain. So we'll start by first uh, understanding what is the structure of this MK matrix. So the in order to uh, answer this, suppose after, so suppose you have already found M1 through MK minus one, and we'll discuss how to find MK. And if we know how to do that, then we can start with uh, M1 and then find M2 and three up to MN minus one. So suppose for some K less than N, uh, we already have <coughs> M1 through MK minus one. Um, and uh, these are such that if I take A, I'll define A K minus one to be M K minus one, M K minus two, all the way up to M one times A has this structure because as I said, in each step you are introducing zeros be below the main diagonal of the successive column. So this is A11 K minus one, A12 K minus one. This is zero and this is A22 K minus one. So this is the, this corresponds to the first K minus one rows. And so this will have N minus K plus one rows. Uh, 
and this is k columns. And this will be n minus k plus 1 columns. Okay, this is the structure you have arrived at. So assuming that you know how to find m1 through mk minus 1, this the product of these matrices times a will have this structure. Now we want to, uh, and here in particular, because we are assuming we have figured out the first uh, k minus 1 matrices, a11 k minus 1 is upper triangular. Okay, so for the next stage, our goal is to find mk. So we want to find uh, mk such that mk times ak minus 1 has two properties. a11 k minus 1. I don't want to disturb that. I've already placed zeros where I want them. So this is preserved. And B, the first column of A22 k minus 1 has or um, ends up with zeros uh, below the main diagonal. That is to say uh, zeros below the first element of this matrix after multiplication by mk. So what is an mk that will do this for me? Right? So this is going to be the mk that will have these two properties. So mk is equal to the identity matrix minus this is of size n cross n alpha k ek transpose so here ek alpha k is an n by 1 vector so i'll write what that is alpha k so it has k zeros followed by L k plus 1 comma k, L k plus 2 comma k, L n k transpose. So this is going to be a vector in R to the n. And there are k zeros here. So this is an this is a this is an n cross one vector. This is the transpose of an n cross one vector and uh, e k. So this vector here has zeros everywhere except in the kth position. It has a one. Okay. So what is the rank of alpha k e k? Transpose. One. One. Correct. So uh, any matrix, okay, um, say B of the form U V transpose, where U and V are n cross one vectors, is always of rank one. Okay. So. Um, So this kind of a matrix MK is actually called a Gauss transform. Okay, and uh, 
Um, so I also need to tell you how to choose these values. So L I K will choose these to be A I K of K minus one divided by A K K of K minus one for I equal to K plus one. So all these indices. Okay, so here I am assuming that this AKK of K minus one is non-zero, and uh, this is uh, this this plays a very significant role in Gaussian elimination, and this is called a pivot element. Now, if you go back and look at our Gaussian elimination we defined the last time, you will find that in Gaussian elimination we are exactly doing uh, using a quantity like this to multiply the uh, uh, the rows of a matrix and add them to other rows. OK, so this is actually doing exactly the same process as what we were doing in the Gaussian elimination, except it's putting it in a different way. So with this, uh, so notice that this has non-zero entries only in the K, L, uh, K plus one to nth position, and this is a vector like this. So it looks like this with K zeros, followed by something non-zero over here, and this is a vector EK, has zeros in the first k positions, uh, for k minus one positions, and a one there, and then zeros everywhere else. So if I multiply these two together, I'll get a I'll get an n cross n matrix, which has this whatever is in here is repeated in the kth column here in the in the product, and everything else will be zero because everything else is multiplying as zero. So m k has the following structure. It has ones along the diagonal. And uh, this is the kth column, OK? And here it has minus L k plus 1, uh, not enough space. Let me do this a little bigger. And here it is minus L K plus one comma K. And it's minus L K plus two comma K all the way up to minus L N comma K. And then zeros everywhere else. Zero here and zeros here. So this is the structure of M K. And uh, notice that it's, this is a K cross K block. This is the kth row. K cross K. K cross K identity block. And this is the kth column. OK, so what this uh, what this means is that if I do MK times AK minus one. So I'll, this is like rough notes, I'll write it over here. MK AK minus one, it will be like multiplication of a K cross K identity. Zero, zero, and then this has things over here and it has this form. The diagonal entries are one and it has non-zero entries. Uh, actually, all of these are non-zero. This, this entry, fix this. It's, it's something here, okay? It's not, uh, so it is this block here. It's minus LK plus one comma K and then there's a one here and then once along the diagonal the rest of the way 
and then all these entries over here. But it has some structure like this. And AK minus 1 has the structure A11 K minus 1. Okay, there's these are not size matched. So I, I'll consider this to be the I K minus 1 matrix, then it's easier to explain. This is A12 K minus 1. And then this is 0, this is A22 K minus 1. So if you do this, then you see that this identity multiplies this A11 K minus 1. So that will so this A11 K minus 1 will get preserved. And uh, uh, this part will have some something. The top right will have something because of this A22 K minus 1. And uh, this bottom part will get multiplied by 0. So these zeros remain unchanged. And uh, this bottom part will get multiplied with this and I'll get something. And this is the part where I'll end up introducing zeros below the main diagonal. So the first K rows. of a k minus one uh, uh, remain unchanged. By multiplication with m k. Lower left block. of a k minus one remains zero after uh, rem remains a zero block after multiplication with m k. So it has these two properties and uh, m so basically m k only affects this a two two k minus one block of uh, this a k minus one matrix. Now these LIKs are exactly the same as required by uh, Gaussian elimination to place zeros in these positions of the matrix. And so pre-multiplication by MK performs exactly the same row operations as Gaussian elimination. That is, it will replace rho i by rho i minus a i k of k minus 1 divided by a k k of k minus 1 times rho k. And this is for k equal to 1 up to n minus 1 and i equal to k plus 1 all the way up to n. And so specifically, the if you look at the kth column, um, what, what is happening is that the uh, this operation is exactly cancelling off in the row k, your, uh, the row k, row k's kth entry, when you divide by this, it gets my, it, the a k k of k minus 1 cancels, and you have a minus a i k which cancels with the a i k of k minus 1 in the i row, and you get 0 at that position and um, all other uh, entries uh, could potentially change. So basically what this is what this means is that a 2 2 of k minus 1 is replaced with a matrix whose first column has zeros below the main diagonal.
okay so so now we know how to construct these matrices uh, m1 m2 up to mn minus 1 and each of these matrices are upper triangular by construction and the product of a series of upper triangular matrices is upper triangular and so if if we so basically what we have is um, m n minus 1 all the way up to m1 times a is equal to u and this product of all these matrices is lower triangular each of these matrices m1 m2 up to mn minus 1 they're all lower triangular by construction and this u ultimately after all these operations it will reduce this matrix a to an upper triangular form now um, if i define this matrix this product to be l inverse then um, what i have is or l inverse a equal to u which implies um, this this is lower triangular and the inverse of a lower triangular matrix is also lower triangular and so this uh, implies a is equal to l u okay and also by construction notice that each of these matrices is lower triangular with ones along the diagonal and so um, the uh, uh, for a lower triangular matrix, the eigenvalues are the uh, diagonal uh, entries. And so all its eigenvalues are equal to 1. And so it is uh, non-singular, can be inverted. And so you have A is equal to LU. So um, basically there is a one-to-one um, -one correspondence between Gaussian elimination and LU factorization. They are equivalent operations. Okay, um, now, so at first glance, it appears that in order to find the LU decomposition, I need to take these N minus one matrices, M1 to MN minus one, and I need to multiply them and then I need to invert that matrix to obtain this L. But it turns out that it's actually very easy to recover L because of the structure in these matrices. Um, so essentially, first let's note that L is actually equal to the inverse of the product of these matrices. And when you invert the multiplication order gets reversed. So it's M1 inverse, M2 inverse up to M n minus one inverse. And so we'll find the structure of L by identifying the structure of these matrices and then identify the structure of the product of these matrices. And we'll see that finding L is actually very easy. So structure of MK inverse. So recall that MK is the matrix such that MK times AK minus is equal to AK. And AK minus one is a matrix such that it's first top left K minus one cross K minus one matrix is upper triangular. And, uh, and below the uh, upper triangular part, you have zeros. And this matrix is such that it's top left K cross K matrix is upper triangular and it has zeros below the top left k cross k sub matrix. Um, so basically uh, this, this MK has the structure I minus alpha k ek transpose, right? That's, that was our construction of MK. So uh, essentially what we see is that we get um, a k from a k minus one by taking a k minus one minus something. This this times this matrix, right? So uh, if we wanted to invert this operation and take m k to the other side, then uh, it's sort of intuitive that maybe we need to do an addition operation. Um, so the answer, uh, the, in fact, that intuition is correct. And so if you consider 
एम के इक्वल टू आई प्लस अल्फा के ई के ट्रांसपोज देन इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस एम के माइनस एम के इनवर्स टू बी आई प्लस अल्फा के ई के ट्रांसपोज देन इफ आई डू इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस विथ एम के then it is i plus alpha k e k transpose times i minus alpha k e k transpose which is equal to i plus alpha k e k transpose minus alpha k e k transpose minus alpha k e k transpose alpha k e k transpose okay now this e k transpose alpha k is actually the inner product between the vector e k and the vector alpha k so i claim that this is equal to zero why is that true Because the matrix is constructed, constructed in such a way. Yes. So alpha k has non-zero entries in um, k plus one through n. Okay. Only those entries of alpha k are non-zero. Whereas e k has a one only in the kth position. so this uh, this has a one in the kth position but the kth entry of alpha k is always equal to zero only the k plus 1 to nth entries are non zero let me go back here see alpha k had k zeros and then k plus 1 to n you have all these lk plus 1 lk plus 2 up to lkn so the these entries uh, the so and uh, ek has a one only in the kth position you see so if i take the inner product of this vector with this vector this one will multiply zero and all these entries will multiply zeros here and so their inner product is zero so this matrix drops off and these two just cancel each other and so this is equal to the identity matrix so i plus alpha k ek transpose is the um, Uh, is the inverse of m k, and notice that this is actually the only thing we used here is that the inner product of these two is zero. So if I have a matrix uh, A equal to I plus U V transpose and U is orthogonal to V, then A inverse is equal to I minus U V transpose. Okay, so. Uh, this is generally true as long as these two vectors are orthogonal to each other so uh, basically uh, the finding the inverse of mk is very easy all you have to do is to change the signs of this part uh, which was i minus alpha k k transpose so basically if uh, if mk is of the form um you have 1 1 then l k plus 1 comma k etc up to minus l n k and then zeros everywhere else and then ones here on the diagonal then mk inverse will be the same matrix but 1 1 and here i have plus lk plus 1 comma k ln k and then once along this diagonal
Now, um, so so we now know how to find MK inverse. That's super easy, given that we've already found what MK is. So if I now look at what is the structure of L, L is the product of these MKs. So this L is um, L is product uh, K equal to one to n minus one m k inverse which is m one inverse m n minus one inverse that is equal to the product of matrices of the form k equal to one to n minus one i plus alpha k e k transpose so it's i plus here because these are the inverse matrices and so if I, if I just expand this out, that is going to be equal to, I'll get an identity matrix when I multiply all the identity matrix matrices together. Plus I take one of these guys and multiply with the identity matrix. Uh, that is the first, that is the next term, k equal to one to n minus one, alpha k, ek transpose, plus all these other terms, which will look, like of the form alpha i, these are the cross terms, ei transpose alpha j ej transpose. Um, and this is for i greater than j. Um, then um, each of these, okay, if you look at uh, the form of actually it's j greater than i, if you look at the form of this, this has um, a one only in the ith position. And this will have non-zero entries from the j plus one-th entry position onwards. And so when I take this inner product, it's always going to be equal to zero. And so all the cross terms actually drop off. And so L is actually equal to I plus sigma k equal to one to n minus one alpha k ek transpose. That's it. So basically, each uh, this is just the identity matrix which puts the may puts ones on the main diagonal of L, and this is basically each of these is a square matrix which has uh, non-zero entries only below the main diagonal of the kth column. Okay, so um, so basically L is unit lower triangular. Unit meaning it has ones on the main diagonal and non-zero entries only below the main diagonal. So for example, for n equal to four, four cross four matrices, L will be of the form one, and here I'll have A21 of zero divided by A11 of zero. This is actually the entries of the A matrix itself. A0 is equal to A. This is A31 of zero divided by A11 of zero. So I can just read off the first column of L from the matrix A. A41 of zero divided by A11 of zero. 
And then in the second column, I have zero here and a one here and a three, two of one. So for this, I need that matrix A1 divided by A22 of one, A42 of one divided by A22 of one. And this will have a zero, zero, one, and then A43 of two divided by A33 of two, and then zero, 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 one in the last column. So that is the structure of L. So basically given, um, given this uh, sequence of, so if you determine the sequence of Gauss transforms, you can form this matrix L without any further explicit computations. So uh, the inverses are accomplished by inverting a set of signs and multiplication is accomplished by just placing the non-zero elements of alpha K into the appropriate positions of L, okay? So uh, this, uh, so again, so just to reiterate, the sequence of Gauss transforms we performed is exactly the same as Gaussian elimination. And uh, therefore, this elude leak decomposition is, uh, uh, is really actually a high level uh, description of Gaussian elimination. There's no difference between the two. And Gaussian elimination itself is order two n cube over three uh, floating point operations. And uh, that same thing carries over to the uh, factorization I just discussed. And in fact, it is the lowest of any triangularization technique for square matrices without exploiting any further structure in the matrix. Now, since uh, L is unit lower triangular, the determinant of L is equal to one. And uh, so L is unit lower triangular. So I've already written that. So determinant of L equal to one. And um, um, uh, so, so basically A is equal to LU. So since determinant of A equals determinant of L times determinant of U, we have that determinant of A equals the determinant of U and u is upper triangular, and so that is equal to the product of i equal to one to n u i i. So the product of the diagonal elements of u will actually give you the determinant of a. Okay, so let's maybe uh, just illustrate this with an example. So suppose my matrix A was the matrix two, two, minus two, minus one, minus two, minus one, zero, one, five. Then the matrix M1 is going to be equal to this thing with, I have ones on the diagonal, It's an upper triangular, lower triangular matrix with ones on the diagonal. And what is this entry? It is minus of um, this A21 divided by A11. This ratio is one, so this will be minus one. And this is this entry is minus of this divided by this. Uh, and so it is plus one. And this will be zero. So you're only placing non-zero entries below the first column. So this is exactly that I minus alpha of one E1 transpose. Um, just for your reference later, I'll just write what this is. This is minus A21 over A11, and this is minus A31 over A11, okay? Now, if I did M1 times A, I'll get the matrix. It'll keep this entry as it is. It'll place zeros here. And all the other entries, you actually have to calculate them. And you get minus one, 
minus 1, minus 2, 0, 1, and 5. And this is what we're going to call the matrix A1. And now, with, when you have this matrix A1, M2 is very easy. You can immediately write it by inspection. Um, it's going to have non-zeros below the main diagonal of the second column. So only one entry here will be non-zero. And then you have the identity structure. So this is going to look like this. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And this entry is going to be this divided by this with a negative sign. So this is 2. And with a negative sign, I have to write minus 2 here. And this is 1. And again, for the sake of completeness, this is minus A32 of 1 divided by A22 of 1. And then if I calculate M2, M1A, that's going to be M2 times A1, which will give you 2 minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, 0, 3. And this is my matrix U. So I've got it in the upper triangular form. And L, which is equal to M inverse. So if I call this matrix M, it's M inverse, which is M1 inverse, M2 inverse. This will be equal to I plus sigma K equal to 1 to 2, alpha K EK transpose. And once again, all I have to do is to invert the signs of these things and place them below the main diagonal. So that is equal to. So I'll have this 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 1 here. And below this, I just have to place the negative of this quantity. So it will become 1 minus 1. And below this, I have to place the negative of this quantity. So it will become 2. So this is my matrix L. So you must uh, check this that A is equal to LU. So L is this matrix, U is this matrix. If you multiply these two together, it will give you back the A matrix. And determinant of A is equal to the product of the diagonal entries of U, which is minus 6. So you can easily check these for yourself. So this is how uh, the LU decomposition works. OK, so this is the vanilla version of Gaussian elimination uh, or LU decomposition that I described. But um, uh, there are things one can do to make this more numerically stable. And that is called Gaussian elimination with pivoting. So we'll start with a simple arithmetic, a simple example, which um, um, uh, just to illustrate why we need to do this. So suppose uh, we are doing our computations in base 10 arithmetic, but we can only store three digits of any numerical computation. That's because um, all uh, computers operate with finite precision arithmetic, so they are going to they're going to have to chop uh, numbers that are too small that to be represented on the computer. So suppose I had a matrix like a system of equations 0 0.001, 1, 1, and 2. This times x1, x2 is equal to 1, 3. OK, suppose I wanted to solve this. You can already see that if I set x1, x2 equal to 1, this will be 1.001 .001 and x this will become 3 and that almost solves this problem. So if I get an answer which looks close to 1, 1, 1, I know that I've solved the problem. But if you try to do this using LU decomposition, remember that LU decomposition is one way to solve these kind of problems and it gives you some computational advantage in very large dimensional systems. Because once you have the LU decomposition, 
you can do a step of forward substitution followed by a step of backward substitution, substitution to find x. So if you work out the LU decomposition exactly as I worked out in that numerical example, um, what you get is the following. You will get L hat. I'll just call it L hat because this is the uh, value you will get if you did this carefully, but with uh, uh, finite uh, uh, three digit arithmetic, so precision arithmetic. So this will be 1000. That is just the ratio of these two. And then 0, 1. And U hat will be equal to 0 0.001 one zero and minus 1000 it turns out that this value is actually minus 1000.001 or something like that but because you're doing it in finite precision arithmetic this is this has an error due to this uh, round off or chopping that happens in finite precision arithmetic so basically if you compute um, L hat, U hat from this. What you end up with is the matrix. So that's easy. You can just do it right very quickly. So you get 0 0.001. Then this times this, I'll get 1. This times this will give me 1. This times this actually gives me 0. OK, so L hat, U hat is quite different from this matrix A. This is actually equal to the matrix A 0 0.001, 1, 1, 2 plus this error matrix 0, 0, 0, minus 2. So you are actually making a large error. So if you use this L hat, U hat, and then you did your forward substitution uh, followed by ba backward substitution, what you will get is a X hat, which will end up becoming 0, 1, which is... Uh, the answer truncated to three digits, but it's quite different from uh, x hat dash, um, which is equal to 1.002 and 0 0.998, which is the correct solution truncated to three digits. OK, so basically, instead of directly doing the LU here, uh, the problem arose because when I when I tried to find this L, I had to divide this by this, and that gave me this large factor of 1,000. And, uh, and in finite precision arithmetic, these kind of large numbers mess up your calculations. And so um, if I had uh, exchanged rows 1 and 2, and then perform LU. Then what I will get is, the, the once I exchange the rows, I'll get 1, 2, 0 0.001, and then 1, this times x1, x2 is equal to, I have to exchange this side also, so 3, 1. So when I exchange the rows, everything here also it gets exchanged. So I start with this system of equations, and if I now get uh, now do the LU hat, LU decomposition, L hat will become equal to one zero point zero zero one, which is the ratio of these two, zero one, and U hat will end up becoming equal to one two zero zero point nine nine. Eight. And if I now um, compute L hat U hat, that will be equal to one two zero point. I need space. One zero point zero zero one two one. And if you use this L hat U hat, uh, the solution. with 
the above L hat U hat is accurate to three decimals. Which is, in other words, it gives exactly this solution that I wrote earlier. So the basic idea is to stabilize the Gaussian elimination by exchanging rows and columns of, uh, when I exchange columns, the entries of this vector get exchanged and I just have to undo that exchange after I've solved the problem. So we'll stabilize the Gaussian elimination by exchanging rows and columns such that the element with largest magnitude ends up in this top left corner of the matrix uh, in the in the pivot pivot position, upper left position. So, um, so that that is going to be the core idea of um, Gaussian elimination with pivoting. So basically, we will end up with uh, permutation matrices. which I'm going to denote by P and Pi, such that um, this P is an identity matrix with some rows I and J permit, uh, permuted. So I could write it as Pij, but uh, I'm just simplifying notation here. And this is a also the identity matrix, but with columns I and J permitted, permuted. Then pre-multiplying by P, um, so PA, what it does is to exchange rows I and J. And if I do A pi, this gives me a matrix where I've exchanged columns I and J. Okay, so the so basically what we will do uh, is um, uh, we will do this kind of um, row and column exchanges so that at each step we end up with the largest possible element as the pivot element and the largest possible magnitude element as the pivot element and then we'll use that to construct the LUD decomposition. Um, I'll cover that in the next class. Um, so we'll stop here for today. Um, we'll see how to use Okay, so that's all I have for today. So we'll continue again on Monday.